Let's take a quick look at path mode first. Path mode allows you to import an SVG file. This is a common vector file type that many applications use for basic shapes. You can also create a shape in path mode by using the action list. We'll start by doing this. Check out the other videos for more tips for working from an SVG. By clicking the Add button, you're making a bend point and a feed, which can be manipulated after you make them. Click about four times just to get started. This is the Zoom tool. You can use Zoom Extents to see your whole active path, or you can use your mouse's scroll wheel if you have one. The Pan tool allows you to move around the workspace too. The select tools are here. We're making a hexagon, so we'll need to add points and manipulate the shape by grabbing segments and bend points and moving them around. You can also use the Add and Remove Bend Point tool, or select a point and hit Backspace or Delete as well. This tool allows you to create a pause where the machine will stop during a bend for you to manipulate the wire. Learn more about that in the Bending in 2.5D video. This icon indicates where the bend will begin. You can change this by selecting the Start Point tool and clicking on a bend point on your path. More on why you might want to do that later. This button is the Undo Workspace Action button. It will allow you to undo up to five changes made in the workspace. You can find undo and other useful commands, such as your unit settings, in the drop-down menus. If you prefer keyboard shortcuts, these are listed in the drop-down menus as well, and you can get a full list from the PDF manual. You'll find important information about your path over here. The height and width give you a reference for your scale, which you can change here. And the path link tells you the total length of your path for estimating how much wire you'll need. Keep in mind that you'll need about seven inches more than your path length to allow the feed wheels to push the wire through to the bend head. Segment length sets the minimum distance between bend points. This affects the resolution of the curve interpreter that we use. Although you can set this to any length, the Plus has a minimum feed requirement of about half an inch or 13 millimeters to be able to compensate for spring back through the material profiles. More on this in the Smooth Curves videos. This area shows you what material profile you have selected. Make sure it matches the material you're using or your bends will not come out accurately in path mode. You can select any of the material profiles from your library here. The action list can be opened or closed using this arrow. Your shape is created using feeds and bends, which show up in the list. The second column allows you to tweak your output shape without altering how the path is rendered in the workspace. More on that in the demo shape videos. When you're manipulating your shape, be aware of your grid size and the snaps that give you more control over your path. The machine control bar buttons at the bottom of the screen are how you control the bender. The home button stays blue until you home the machine. It should be homed every time you turn the machine on or after you clear any jams. The jog button opens a panel similar to other CNC's digital readout display. For more info on this, watch the video about understanding the DIYer's DRO. Now that you've had a chance to look around path mode, you can hit bend and bend out the shape that we made, or go on to see more about wireware too.